This is called Poem. Chisel chinned, trendy wordsmith, all teeth and tan and hair that looks like it could be easily quiffable. So young and clean, he's probably easily sniffable. Thou hipster Ginsberg, with a conscience so hot it can warm the coldest day with the fires of righteousness, whose words ooze sensibility. How pained his outlook, this zeitgeist bending, Twitter trending, hot young thing, this new kid on the writer's block, this pro prototype Byron with exuberant facial expressions, this slam-winning, rhyme-spinning, nonchalant, thin, thin slip of a lad with a gob that spews perfect indignation in just the right amounts with controlled anger and lots of dramatic pauses. Oh God, I wish I was him. I wish I could be him. I wish me and him were mutually interchangeable. He's so brilliant, like the brightest object in the known galaxy. A supernova, a thousand fires of phosphorus force, brilliant at what he does, brilliant at capturing souls, brilliant at poetry. I bet he's brilliant at everything. I bet he's never lost a game of buckaroo. He's brilliant and sexy and worthy and oh so right and sexy and coolly infused into the very now and sexy and young with the most perfect skin that he should merely stand at the mic and open his mouth and utter two syllables for me to become as blustered as a Victorian gentleman who's just caught his first glimpse of ankle. And I want to speak to him. I want to commune with him. I want to tell him, hey, good stuff, man. You've opened my mind to new possibilities and then trampled on it with your youthfulness in your trendy converse all-stars as you lift the night completely to the very pinnacle of absolute truth and by turns reminded me that my own youthfulness is now as relevant and erroneous as turning up at an otter convention with a stoat. Oh, this slippy hippie slate like lad, all very subtle and very emoty. If you didn't know any better, you'd think him a bit scroty. So slight and wild in the night, he sets it afire with rhythms of poets past. I want to speak to him, whisper so subtly into his ear. Blow me, blow me away with your words. I love your body, I love your body of work. And at the break, People are talking, eulogising, rhapsodising, and it's all about him. Oh, for he's so intense and righteous and theatrical, and oh, he's so vibrant and ravishing and clever, and oh, he's so visionary and brash and emotional, and oh, not only that, but he's got the kind of forearms that could easily operate a butter churn with hardly any trouble at all. This gig being in the centre of Dorset, where butter churns are obviously still a thing. I follow him through this crowd of admirers and acolytes, tiptoeing on the very periphery of a youthful mini-mob, suddenly aware that I'm the only one here that remembers the Millennium, or Tamagotchis, or the 1984 Olympics. He makes a break for the bogs. And now we're at your neighbouring urinals, the fluorescent tubes of his magical wazza gently caressing the soft hairs of his delicate chin, his eyes scanning the blank tiled wall, his sensitive nostrils taking in the pungent earthy aromas in a venue where the patrons are mostly vegetarian and as such relish the most intriguing bowel movements. As for myself, I've never had much of a sense of hummus. His eyes almost feral and yet with deep intelligence, as he concentrates on the matter at hand with the same kind of intensity he demonstrates at the mic, his pea stream strong and healthy and forceful, it sounds like the Trevi Fountain, and certainly just as aesthetically pleasing, he doesn't even fart, is there anything he's not good at? And I want to tell him that I loved his poems, all of his poems. His poem about oxygen was such a breath of fresh air. His poem about raspberries was surprisingly bitter. His poem about the Mona Lisa, what a masterpiece. His poem about the perfect serve in tennis, I couldn't fault it. His poem about being woken by the smoke alarm, such an eye-opener. 
and I want to tell him that I got the joke he put in there about deja vu, even though I'd heard it before. And I want to tell him that he's changed the way I look at the world. And I want to tell him that he speaks with a clarity of conscience so concise he makes the Dalai Lama look like a Mardi self-centred premiership footballer. And I want to tell him that his voice is so silky smooth listening to him is like being nuzzled by a mallard. And I want to tell him that I pay 30 quid and a packet of frazzles for just a very brief snog. And I want to tell him that his skinny jeans really leave nothing to the imagination and I want to tell him that his work evokes such feelings within destiny and timelessness the sheer manic dance of life magic in the mundane a pounding euphoric oneness that weaves into us all inescapable yet brilliant tapestry of life this is what I want to tell him but instead I just stare at his knob we wash our hands at the sink and as I wait for the hand dryer, which has all the power of a gnat's fart, I say, hey, good set. And he says, cheers.